Howdy. In this video, this is the last example we'll deal with vectors, and man, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And so, let's take a look at this. It says that there are three vectors. You have vector A, B, and C. Now, the sum of the three vectors is defined to be R. The direction of three vectors is shown. But take a look at this. Your coordinate system is all kinds of jacked up, okay? The x component is at an angle. This is the this is your axis right here. Here is your x and y axis. And what they denoted was the positive x axis is at an angle and pointed downwards, and the positive y axis is going to be at this angle right here, okay? So be very careful. B, which looks like it's going straight up and down, this is the one that's at an angle to my axis. So be careful. Now, not only is the axis kind of crazy, let's keep on reading. It says the magnitude of B is B, and B is a known quantity. The magnitude of the vector A is a known, uh, is a known constant K times the magnitude of vector C. Okay, so what that means is that the magnitude of A right, is equal to K times, some constant K times, the magnitude of vector C. Okay, so keep that in mind. The magnitude, though, of C is unknown. <laughs> okay, I do see is unknown. So if it is required that the y component of r be 0, so I know that r y needs to be equal to 0, find the x component of r, or x, <laughs> is what I'm looking for. Okay, and the angle theta is known. Man, this, this is pretty nuts, finally. Okay, so what we need to do is, what I always like to start by doing is writing the components for a, b, and c. Let's write the components for A. A is going in the negative x direction, all right? Positive x is this way, and so negative x is going to be up that way, and so it's going to be a negative, but we don't know what the magnitude of A is, but we know the magnitude of A is k times c, so it'll be some negative k times c i. And that's it, it has no y component. Let's, um, let's take a look at B. For B, what we've got is we're kind of here at an angle. But let's find the x and y component. Look at the x component of B. The x component of B is right here. And notice how it's going in the positive x direction and is adjacent to that angle. And so what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a positive B cosine theta in the x direction. And then as for the y direction, there's the y component of b. The y component of b is pointed in the negative y direction and is opposite that angle. And so we're going to go negative b sine theta j. Okay, so there's b. And then as for c, c is solely going in the y direction. And so it's some um, c, uh, well, j, right? Because you had nothing in the x, solely going in the y, and it's in the positive y. Now they told me that the y component of my resultant is equal to zero. So let's figure out what ry is. Ry is going to be what I get when I add up all the y components together. And when I add all the y components together, I get negative b sine theta, so it's here. Notice how this has no y component, plus c, right, plus c, and that's equal to zero. And this is massive. This is massive because we need to make sure that you need to make sure that your final answer is in terms that are given. The magnitude of C is unknown. Do you know what is? B. B is a known quantity. And so what I can do from here, I, I can find the, uh, the magnitude of C. The magnitude of C is B sine theta. So now what I can do is I can express my answer in terms that are known. Okay, and so if I want to find Rx, the x component of my resultant, that's actually what the question is asking for. You add up the x component, so I have a negative k times c, and then I've got right here this plus b cosine theta, and that's it. But I can't leave my answer like this. If you leave your answer like this, you will get points taken off because c is an unknown quantity. So you have one of two options. One, box c and then box this and you're good to go. Or what I would do is I would take this value that we now know and just plug it into there. So your final answer 
the x component of my resultant is going to be some negative k times b sine theta plus b cosine theta. And all of these values are known constants. That's how you're going to deal with vectors on this first exam.